Good morning, Victory Kids. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. I hope you've had a very good week, and indeed, this day we've come to rejoice in the Lord. And I would kindly ask you to rise on your feet as we start our service today with Psalm 62, verse 1 to 2. Can we read it together? Make a joyful shout to God. All the earth, sing out the honor of his name, make his praise glorious. Hallelujah! Glory! Hallelujah!
beautiful indeed the lord's love never fails us he loves us so much and we love him so we want to continue worshiping him let's lift up our hands children let's lift up our hearts let's worship the lord
that Lord you be glorified in our lives you be glorified in everything that we do everywhere we go Lord we desire your name to be glorified because God you've done good in us and Lord this day we've come to tell you that we love you we love you we love you and that's why Lord we've brought our worship to you to tell you that Father you deserve all the glory you deserve all the honor and all the adoration Father we pray even as we get to hear your word this day the Lord will minister to each and every boy and every girl in a way that all of us at the end of it all we can say that Father you've spoken to us we thank you Father for your spirit inside of us who enable us to do your will we thank you father and we give you all praise and all glory and all adoration for it's in jesus mighty name we pray and you do believe amen amen boys and girls we've had a very wonderful time in the presence of god and i believe we've enjoyed ourselves you know praising god telling him how we love him you know he he he, he loves when we tell him we love him you know and he, he he always looks forward for us to have that time to tell him how much we love him now boys and girls is that time we want to hear our day's memory verse and i want you at home you know you put your hands together as we bring those who are going to say the memory verse for today let's all put our hands together for that and girls you've seen how the memory verse has been done by our children and i want us to put our hands together and appreciate those who've done today's memory verse come on let's clap for them well boys and girls we thank god because of the word that has just come into our heart and i believe you're also putting it in your heart and as you do that you want to be a disciple of jesus christ now boys and girls as usual we want to be reminded again of what you know we learned last sunday and our two friends are already here ready to remind us of what we learned and i want to move just a little bit closer so that we can get to know what we learned last sunday thank you all right oh baraka and pendo good morning good, good morning, morning teacher Andrew. good to see you you looking awesome good to yeah. see you too baraka what did you take in the morning oh i took some mandazi and tea very good and my friend pendo what did you check in the morning i took some tea and bread and of course i know you also took the word of god that's why you're looking that radiant oh, right yeah. yes now boys and girls um i want to start with baraka baraka please tell boys and girls the topic of our last lesson thank you teacher andrew it was the power of the holy spirit and teacher david focused on a subtitle jesus the anointed one yes boys and girls yes jesus the anointed one remember teacher david started a new topic last week about the power of the holy spirit and he focused on jesus the anointed one i really enjoyed this service and i want to go to my friend pendo pendo please tell boys and girls the bible lesson Thank you teacher Andrew. It was about Jesus going to the temple 
and he read the scripture that prophet Isaiah had prophesied about him that the spirit of the Lord was upon him and had anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. Yes. Wow, wow. I, I, I like that. I don't know how you were able to remember all that teacher David taught us. And I wanna, because you've not finished uh, uh, Pendo, I want to ask Baraka, can you tell us more of what teacher David taught us last Sunday? Oh, yeah. Also, Jesus read that he was sent to heal the brokenhearted, to preach freedom to those who are bound and recovering of sight to the blind, and also to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Awesome, Baraka. Boys and girls, remember that word is coming from the book of Luke chapter 4. Is it verse 18? Yes, exactly. So you can go there and get to remind yourself more of what we learned that day. Now, uh, before you go, uh, Pendo and Baraka, I want, I don't know whether you're able to, can you say the memory verse together? Yes. Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, yes. yes teacher. Barack, are you sure? Yes, I am. No one will, will go faster than the other? No. <laughs> no. Now, boys and girls want to test Baraka and Pendo if they can say the memory verse together. Can you go ahead? First John chapter 5, verse 7. So there are witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And these three are one. Boys and girls at home, let's all put our hands together for Pendo and Baraka. Now, boys and girls, I know you're ready to receive today's word. And I want to allow Pendo and Baraka to go back to the seats and listen to today's word. Now, boys and girls, I know you're ready and you are super excited to receive today's word. Remember, Teacher David, last week started a topic and we call it the power roll the Holy Spirit. The power, you know? When I think of power, you know, I feel like doing like this, you know? power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the kind of power that Teacher David started last Sunday is not the, you know, the power that you get after eating a lot of kideri and ugali and nyamachoma and all that. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, children, today we'll be focusing on a subtitle, I've called it the promise of the Father. Okay, can you say the promise of the Father? At home, I want to hear the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father. The other word for the promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. Now, boys and girls, before I come to the Bible story for today, I want to tell you something about uh, my father, Mr. Ngala Sr., because my father, just like any father in this world, you know, every father loves their children. And my father loved me very much, just like he was. My father liked promising me things. And something good about my father, when he promises me something, he makes sure that he does what he has promised to do. Okay? Just like your father and your mother and your guardian, when they promise you something, they do it. Now, while I was growing, when I was a small boy, there was uh, this time that I needed, you know, some learning materials, some books, some, you know, revision papers. In all those days, we never had laptops, we never had computers, we never had those, um, what do you call them? The iPads, the iPhone, those i, I things. We never used to have them like you have them nowadays. And so our school happened to be at the remote, you know, at the upcountry where 
there were no much, you know, there were few books, there were few learning materials. And, you know, I, 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 I liked reading and my father encouraged me to read, you know. And one time I told my dad, you know what, I want this type of textbook because our teacher told us that that book will make us pass exams. You know, I don't know whether it's still called the same name. It's called Encyclopedia. I don't know whether you call it that name nowadays. Now, it is a big, big book that has all subjects. And you know what my dad did? My dad, all the way from the city, made sure that I got that book, which enabled me to do my revision. And another thing that my father did, you know, I also needed past papers. We call them past papers, but basically they are revision papers, okay? Those days we never used to have many of those things. When you happen to have one, you make sure that you utilize that, you make sure that you make use of it to the best. Now, my dad, one time he went to buy meat. Yes, he went to buy meat. And now he used to stay very, very far. He went to buy meat and, you know, the butcher man used a past paper and it happened that paper was for the same class that I was. And when my dad looked at that paper, oh, he was very happy because I told him I want past papers as well. And he wrapped that paper well, he put it in an envelope and he went to the post office and made sure that paper got to where I was some few days when he posted that paper, I got that paper and the textbook, boys and girls. You know what? I read hard and I passed my exam. When I passed my exam, one of the things that he also promised is when you pass your exam, I want to make sure that I buy you a gift. And can you guess the gift? The gift was a leather belt. Boys and girls, that might not be a big thing to you, but my days back in the village, when you see a boy, a little boy having a leather belt, that is a big thing. I was very happy because I now have my leather belt. And as when I went to Form 1, I had my leather belt, you know, showing boys my leather belt, you know, being my gift from my father. My father promised me. And you know what? He kept his promise. He kept his promise of making sure that I have past paper and that encyclopedia and also a belt. My dad kept his word. Remember today, title of our message is The Promise of the Father. Now, when I go to the Word of God, children, when I go to the Word of God, and this comes from the book of Luke, just like last week, Teacher David read from the book of Luke, but today, <coughs> it is the book of Luke, chapter 24, yes, the book of Luke, chapter 24, and the Bible says, boys and girls, that there was a time, you know, just after Jesus died, you know, he, he, he died and he rose again, you know, he, he rose again, and there were a number of people who had seen Jesus rising from the dead. You remember the, those women who went in the morning to the tomb and they saw Jesus? Yeah? And they, they had an evidence of Jesus coming back to life. And boys and girls, there were these two disciples who were going to Emmaus. You remember them? When they're walking and uh, this person comes and starts walking with them. And they later came to realize, wow, this was Jesus. You know, when they realized that this was Jesus at their home in Emmaus, you know what they said? We will not stay here. We'll have to go back to Jerusalem. That evening, that night, they went to Jerusalem and they shared the good news. And as they were sharing the good news, boys and girls, guess what? As they were sharing the good news to the 11 disciples and other people who were there in that room, guess what, boys and girls? Jesus appeared just like that. He never used the door. He, 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 he never used the window. But he just appeared to them like that. 
I don't know if you're the one you knew someone died some few days ago and you're just eating your food and someone who was dead just appears. I don't know what happens. I don't know how you want to feel. For me, I would feel kind of some fear. You know, someone was dead and I'm seeing him. Well, boys and girls, it just happened. Jesus appeared to them and they were terrified. And Jesus told them, why are you terrified? You know, in fact, he said, peace to you. And he asked them, why are you terrified? And I would see probably Peter holding himself like that, Kina, Andrew, probably wondering, holding the chip like this, because they have seen Jesus who was dead some few days ago and is now back to life. Somehow they were excited. And now boys and girls, listen to this. And as Jesus was talking to them, he told them, well, is there some food that I can I can eat. And you know what, boys and girls? They went on and brought some fish. They brought, they brought some fish and some honey. They gave Jesus, and Jesus ate in their presence. These people were super excited because they have seen Jesus, who was dead some few days ago, and they can talk to him. They can see him eating fish just like, uh, you know, he used to. And boys and girls, that's not the end of my story. And Jesus started talking to them about the word of God. You know, he started telling them, you remember the days that I walked with you, you know, probably in the streets of Galilee. You remember I told you about my existence, everything that was talked about me, you know, it will come to pass. You remember what Moses, you know, the law of Moses said about me. Yes, it had to be fulfilled. And he went on and told them, you remember what the Psalms, you know, the Psalms that we read, you know, the Psalms that talked about me, all those things had to be fulfilled. And he went on and told them about the prophecy. You remember last week, boys and girls, Sir David telling us about the prophecy of, uh, you know, the, the prophecy that Isaiah wrote some many, many, many years ago. And Jesus coming to the temple, he reads about himself. And no, he was just reminding them about everything that was written about him. Another thing that Jesus told his disciples is about uh, the one time he want to be crucified. And the third day he will resurrect. And I would see disciples seated there listening to Jesus you know, and as he talked to them, they were getting understanding. All those things that Jesus spoke about, about him. Now, boys and girls, it must have been very interesting because everything that Jesus spoke had come to pass. And I would see probably Peter asking his friends, I'm, I'm just thinking, boys and girls, that is not in the Bible, probably telling um, um, one of the disciples, yes, I remember Jesus told us about this. Yes, it's true. It is true. It is true. It is true. Everything that Jesus said, you know, that evening, that night, he had already told them before he died. And now, boys and girls, I'm now coming to this very important point and I want you to sit still on a chair and listen to this. And now as he's talking to them, you know, he told them about something. And he told them, now listen to this. You guys, you want to be ministers. You're going to witness about me in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Judea, and many cities in this place. And I want you to listen to this. Before you go, and share the good news about Jesus, about me. I want you to listen and listen very carefully. I want you to stay. You know, my Bible says I want you to tarry. But I want to use a simpler word. I want you to wait. Tarry is another word for waiting. I want you to wait in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. Can you say the promise of the Father? 
Oh, boys and girls at home, I want to hear some shout. The promise of the Father. All right. He told them to wait in Jerusalem until they get the promise of the Father. And the promise of the Father, the other name of the promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. Simply what Jesus was telling the disciples is they wait until they get the Holy Spirit because this Holy Spirit will help them to do the work of God. You remember Jesus telling them that they want to be the witnesses of the gospel of Jesus in Jerusalem, in Judea, and all those towns. And boys and girls, you know, the disciples of Jesus were excited. We'll receive this promise, the Holy Spirit, because those days, you know, he was not there permanently. He would come and he would go. He would come and he would go. But this time, Jesus was promising them that this promise will come and dwell with them. And after that, boys and girls, you know what? Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Bethany, and he blessed them, and he started rising and going up and up and up until he disappeared in the cloud, and they went back to Jerusalem, praising God and worshiping God as they celebrated the goodness of the Lord. Boys and girls, as we come to the end of this service today, I want to tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ has promised us the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit that has been promised to us will help us to reach out to boys and girls in our schools, in our neighborhoods, everywhere we go. As we receive this Holy Spirit inside of us, he will help us to speak the word of God boldly as we do that. Boys and girls will receive Jesus, they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and their lives will not remain the same again. Another thing I've learned in this word is that God keeps promises. Boys and girls, when you speak a word, when you tell someone something, make sure that you keep whatever you've told that person. Why? Because even our God keeps promise. He kept the promise of giving us the Holy Spirit. If you're seated, just rise. I want to pray with you so that you can enjoy the power of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, as you reminded us about the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. As boys and girls in victory faith, our desire is that, Lord, we will experience more and more of this in feeling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just like we were promised by our Lord Jesus Christ. And even as we get the Holy Spirit, Father, we pray that we will not sit in, will not sit down with the power that we've received, but will go outside and share the goodness of the Lord with our fellow friends, with our fellow boys and girls in our neighborhood, in our schools, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we give you all praise and all honor for it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and we give thanks. Amen, amen. Boys and girls, we've come to the end of our today's service, but before that, Let's be reminded to give God's tithe, our mommies and our daddies, our guardians will help us to do that. And secondly, our teachers have prepared nice materials that can help us to grasp the, to, the, the lesson for today in a whole bigger way. We thank God for your time and we're looking forward for another time next week as we celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you and may the Lord God do you good. Thank you very much.
Bye. 